Westmont, and I'll be your moderator for today's Sirica webinar entitled The Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index. The webinar will be led by Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting in Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Your audio settings are muted, and if you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the box labeled Question. Feel free to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube and on our blog at blog.hericogolf.com. And I think that's about it for housekeeping, so I'd like to turn it over to Hirico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob, and more importantly, thank all of you for taking the time to attend today's webinar on shaft fitting. This is now our second year in a row providing educational seminars to those who love the art and the craft of club making and club fitting golf clubs. I promise for those who, who, who heard my spiel last year on shaft fitting, this will not be a repeat of it. Hopefully I can provide some additional insight on this complicated subject matter. You'll have to bear with me too. I'm a little under the weather, so uh, hopefully uh, I won't make too many breaks here. Okay. In this webinar, <clears throat> we want to discuss and break down some of the things that you commonly hear and try to make it sensible. I'm sure that the, those that have tuned in today most likely have a strong feeling about the importance of the shaft and how to fit or be fitted for one. Let's face it, shaft fitting can be quite confusing. Even for those who are mired in shafts all day long have a hard time communicating with potential customers. For example, have someone explain the difference between a $30 graphite shaft and a $300 graphite shaft in terms of performance. Or maybe it's the lingo you constantly hear like low torque, high modulus, frequency, medium launch angle, low spin, etc. The, com the common guy is just going to shake his head and say, just give me the one that I can hit long and straight as possible and be within my price range. Even the experienced golfer with enough information to be dangerous wants it put in layman's terms that, which is easy to digest. Now let's take a look at the role of the shaft for a second. When you look at the modern shaft in the lowest common denominator, it's really nothing but a tapered hollow tube. Think about that for a second. Now ask a myriad of people um, of the importance of the shaft and you'll just get uh, just as many varied answers. There will be some of uh, those out there that will say that the shaft does little, if anything, as it all comes down to the golf swing. Then there's others out there who believe that the shaft is the engine or the transmission of the, the club and the most important of all the components. This might come as a surprise and maybe a shock to some, but I fall somewhere in between. But I will insist that the shaft is definitely more than just a thing to connect the head to a grip. Imagine if we had no shaft at all. Well, I got a Nintendo Wii for Christmas this year, and golf is one of the games that you could play on it. While it's fun to play on a snowy afternoon like today, there's one element that's dearly missing, and that's the aspect of feel. I want you to use your imagination for a second and bear with me. Let's say we have the technology to incorporate electromagnet inside the grip, and this would keep the, uh, the club head a constant distance from your hands. Now, if you were to swing the club and hit the ball, what do you think would happen? Well, the ball might fly as it should, but at impact, you wouldn't have any feel or feedback on where you hit the ball on the face, if you did at all. You see, the shaft acts as a transmission device to allow the feedback from the club head to your hands and then back up to your brain. Before I go any further, 
I want you to consider this. Let's say you're currently using or hitting a 45-inch right-handed driver with some sort of 60-gram graphite shaft in R-Flex, as this is the most popular combination today. Well, if we just reshafted the club with a 120-gram steel shaft or a sub-40-gram graphite shaft at the same length, you'd still be able to hit that club. If you change the shaft from, say, um, something as flexible as the most flexible lady shaft available, all the way to the stiffest, extra stiff shaft available, you'd still be able to hit that ball. The shaft may be less than $4, or it may cost over $300, and you would still be able to hit that ball. So how important is shaft fitting when you can change any of those parameters and still hit the ball? Well, this leads us to the rest of the rolls of the shaft. Aside from the length of the driver, what's the first thing you notice when you pick up a golf club? Well, it's the weight. Since head weights from one manufacturer to another don't deviate that much, then the overall weight of a golf club is primarily controlled by the weight of the shaft. We already stated golfers are most concerned with performance and could care less about the details. Well, shaft weight should be one of the first considerations that you make after you've established what club length you really need. The reason the shaft needs to be the right amount of weight is to be able to swing the club the most efficiently. Most people assume that a lighter weight shaft could be swung faster and provide more distance. Well, that's not always the case. A shaft that's too light and the player ends up playing what I call Zorro golf or has no idea where the, the club is during the swing. And if the club is too heavy, then it's difficult to swing the club efficiently. Every person reacts to weight differently, so there is no magic formula. Where you or your customer uh, maximizes the distance uh, will need to be tested with various weight shafts, or at least pay close attention to what's worked well in the past and avoid the shaft weights that have not provided good results or have shown a lack of efficiency. I should also point out it's not always the weight of the shaft, but the balance point or the weight distribution of the shaft that matters too. That is um, where the importance of the swing weighting comes into play usually. But the shaft's um, weight distribution can contrib contribute to the uh, efficiency of the swing as well. Take a look at the diagram for a second. The red dot on the, the shaft denotes where the balance point of the shaft is. Now shafts uh, that are tip heavy, uh, like what's pictured at the top diagram, may make the club feel heavier or have the same effect as a heavier weight shaft. While a shaft whose weight is concentrated closer to the butt end can give the same sensation as using a lighter weight shaft. Therefore, another role of the shaft is to provide some sort of balance or weight distribution in conjunction with the shaft weight. There also needs to be some semblance of feel and control. And what I mean by that is golfers covet the concept of feel. Years ago, there was a company called Fiberspeed. They offered these extremely flexible fiberglass shafts some of which were far more flexible than what's currently on the market. You can get a lot of whip or feel from those, even for golfers who had slow swing speeds. The problem was for golfers who were stronger or had more of an uh, uh, ag aggressive swing, they had no idea where the ball might land. On the other side of the spectrum was ping. For years, their irons came with X-flex and then later S-flex shafts. That was the only option despite the fact whether you were a strong uh, touring professional, an average golfer, a senior male, or a lady. You got the same shaft. The idea 